Hello everyone, Ragewood here, back with a Dragon Air Silent Gods video, and today we're doing our Red vs Blue Arena fight. Uh, now, I won't, be, I won't lie, I'm probably not the best person to watch on this. I am in the negative so far this season, out of 10 I think I'm 4 and 6. Last week's one I got wrong, I thought Beldale might kill walk towards Ozzel rather than Stangwem and yeah that didn't happen so Ozzel sort of wrecked face the one before we did get right though so you know but this week I am of the opinion that it's a bit more uh, clear cut so let's take a peek see learn more we'll bring this across here for everyone to see and enjoy so the time is now to vote we want our 200 worm arrow we are not happy with starlight dice so here we go the red team as always pictures are awful if you want a clearer picture you can jump into the dragon air discord and take a look at them there but we can see the gear here we have nesjenka with her exclusive artifact in the rhapsodist set so increasing your attack speed and she gains increased attack power when someone dies with these gloves. A Corsetia in the Black Vice Visage, so she gets a shield, whoever breaks it gets attacked down. Ancestral Protection, and she's got the massive Colossus Chest, so when she ults she will cleanse a debuff from herself. Nathaniel in the Aurelian Vest, um, so he's giving increased defense to everyone. Puppeteer. So again, sharing defense, main relief to increase the shield. Shout out in the back ink. So you know if his skills were crit, but that's fine because he does a uh, derivative damage, so none of them crit anyway. Uh, derivative damage set, and again the gloves are increased attack power. And then we got Megan in a main release skill haste um, staff. That the shield effect from this won't really ever come into effect because she's doing heals over time. But maybe the heal for the only set might, who knows. Looking at the fuzzy attributes, Quisitea has over 100k HP. Uh, looks like around 2.5k defense, 2k attacks, a very balanced build. Although very high accuracy, almost 400, so she's really banking on um, the, the battle skill pulling someone in. And then the, the knock-ups and things from her alt. Megan will also possibly boost that as well. So something to bear in mind. Then we have Quisetia. Around just 4.2k attack. She is crit capped. Well, I say crit capped. She's got 96% by the looks of it. She doesn't actually need that much. She only needs 85. 260 crit damage. And it looks like she's been baked with a load of resistance there. It looks like 176 seems odd nathaniel he heals off enlightenment very low enlightenment i say very low just over 200 but you'd think there'd be more there uh reasonable defense almost 4k about 50k hp shaltar has over 300 enlightenment there uh, very squishy on the, the defense only three 1400 high attack though almost 5k attack 300 enlightenment, he means business. And then Megan, doesn't really matter what Megan's in because she's one of those weird heroes where she doesn't scale from anything. Doesn't increase her healing, doesn't increase her damage. So just you know, average build, a little bit of everything everywhere. And that is where they are placed. So everyone's gonna benefit from the cleanse and the heal over time from Nathaniel's battle skill. Nastyanka will obviously use her battle skill straight away, but she's at the back. She can only jump, I think, five or six spots forward, so uh, we'll see. Right, taking a look at the blue team then. Oops, sorry. Came my throat. <clears throat> so apologies for that. So here we are, blue team. We have Lucian in the visage, same as Corsetia, so whoever breaks his shield will get attacked down. In a Tundra set, so he'll take less damage as long as people don't crit. Um, interesting choice, because most people will be. 
and in the cloak so when he places a debuff he has a chance to remove a buff something to bear in mind uh secret neurotrix roots so increased hp and attack by a tremendous amount aerial set so she's gaining increased attack as well for every crit damage she has and the gloves that increase damage for everyone that dies dalbum in the blast jar so he's gonna reduce damage to those around him increased defense as well ancestral set so we're taking some heat off everyone else and reducing debuffs when he casts his alt forest in our witches remained a standard sort of arena combo here especially when poison is paired with ice this is a nightmare aerial set so he does more damage if his attack is higher than everyone else's and in the precise carnage gloves so he'll do increased damage to those under decreased events if he his ult hits three times so potentially also come into play if he places the defense down first time round. and talking of scourges of arena we have a lecabri this is one that i do not own and i actively avoid in a puppeteer set so increasing everyone else's defense who are around here and she has the Mary's blessing, blessing so it increases healing and shield more notably she is in the hourglass so she's gonna get that sort of charm and alt reduction off pretty quick you would think as well as the shield battle skill that she puts a shield on someone so let's take a look at her skill haste so she's only got around 140 but notably it is quicker than everyone else on the other side um accuracy rise she's got almost 400 which means she'll have almost 400 resistance too because that's what her passive says 3k defense 75k hp lucian does damage based on max hp as well as attack so 100k hp here uh, 270 accuracy so hopefully enough to get his freeze off and his alt down um, he also has a shield which reduces control effects at the start of the battle that's the passive for him whilst that shield is up dalbum looks like it's just a general tank build here 120k defense sorry hp 2700 defense a little bit of resistance here he's just there to absorb damage and then he goes immortal as well voresh 280 accuracy very very squishy defense around 1500 three and a half k attack and then we have sigrid lastly then so um interestingly not crit capped only has what's that 72 so very interesting there 220 something percent crit damage 4k attack even squishier defense and that is the positioning for that team so uh Quisetia is going to be uh facing up against dalbum here nathaniel just behind we'll have this jenka sort of down in this corner sort of behind my face and they're the one else facing up this side so what we've got to look at here is Nisjenka is going to be the key piece now there isn't lots of darkness for her to trigger lots of her black feathers off her ultimate but i don't think we're even going to get that far her battle skill will kick in first and you will naturally assume she's going to jump either Vorish or sigrid completely knocking them out and ultimately reducing the damage that everyone is going to take but we do have a lecabri coming into play here as well a lecabri her passive she puts a blind out for five seconds to begin with so that will almost render this jenka null and void and she will put a shield out on someone as well i guess the point will then come who will Quisetia pull in with her battle skill will she even get that far or will a lecabri kick in before that happens my guess is yes 
I know how annoying this chick is in Arena, especially with the Hourglass. Now, she's not the fastest, but, you know, Lucian's battle skill will also freeze whoever has the highest turn meter. And I expect that to be Cressetia as well when she gets the boost from Megan. So, with that in mind, my vote this week is going to be the blue team. Just double checking, it is definitely, yep, is going to be the blue team. So there we are, that is submitted. We are in for the week. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Appreciate you watching. Look after yourselves, take care, work hard, but as always, play harder. And I'll see you in another video soon. Cheers.